sql injection some people call it sql injections some other people call it sql injection so this is what we are going to discuss in our video today so uh we are going to discuss what a sql injection is and we are going to have an overview uh the difference between blind injection and the normal sql injection buckle up let's get started Inside security in no time. SQL injection is one of the most common web hacking technique where attackers they inject scripts like malicious codes into the user field instead of like a username or password. So now what we can do before we get started, if we go uh, to any web browser, we type SQL injection. We are going to go to the OWAPS website. And then, you know, they are going to give you an overview. I always encourage you guys to just always make sure that you go uh, read on your own, you know, how to uh, all SQL injection works. And how to prevent the etc. So let's just uh, go to the OAPS uh, website to see what it is. Uh, so while this is loading, you know, uh, they, we have like multiple uh, type of SQL injection. You have like uh, blind injection and normal SQL injection. So the uh, the blind SQL injection is nearly identical to normal SQL injection. The only difference being uh, the way the data is retrieved from the database. So when the database do does not help put the data to the web page, an attacker is forced to seal the data by asking the database a series of true and false questions. So this is why they call it the blind injection. But in our series today, what we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss the normal SQL injection. But before we get started, so we come to the OWAPS website. I encourage you, you can just go to Google or any web browser and search for the uh, SQL injection OWAPS. And then they just tell you what it is and give you a bunch of information and how to just practice. So why SQL injection is can be dangerous for your database. So they even give you a couple examples. But as always, you can always read, read this because this is plain English. So we are going to just do some practice. So what we are going to do first, so we are going to just go to our server. So if this is the first time that you're watching our videos, you have to make sure that you go back to our previous videos on how to set up your cybersecurity lab. So where you will uh, have to download uh, and install your server made exportable. So we are going to our server right now. Let me just delete all this and put my IP address. Alright, so we are going to go to dvwa and then we are going to enter our uh, credentials, my username and password. The username is admin, the password is password. So yeah, this is the name, that's why they call it dvwa. Uh, so this is what it stands for. So I'm not going to repeat it, but you can read it. All right. So give you some instruction how to set it up, etc. You can just read all this to uh, on your own. So this is what we are going to just you know discuss today: the SQL injection, this one here. But you know before we get started, we have to make sure that the DVWA security sets to low, because if it doesn't set set to low, our demonstration is not going to work. So this is the uh, benefit of, of DVWA. It's, it's a place where you can come and practice your cybersecurity skills without harming anybody. So we're gonna submit that. And then we are going to go to SQL injection. So here it is. So you see there's a field, you know, like as always, like, you know, when you go to your website, there's a field, they tell you to enter your user ID. Uh, normal user gonna say like, you know, that cyber guy. I type that side guy. I mean, nothing happened, you know, it just accept me. Or if, if there's an error, it just tell me what it is. But you know, what if 
I am like, you know, not that cyber guy. I'm like someone else. So I can actually, you know, ask questions to that field. So and expect the database to just give me information to just uh, start an answer. For example, uh, I can start something like one equal one. So this is always true. You know, one is one. One equal one, two, three equals two, three equals three. That's, and there, there's no way around that. So this is true. When I click on that, hit enter. I can see, oh yeah, this, you know, a normal database shouldn't just return anything. But in my case, they say, oh, it's an admin, admin. So that tells, you know, that one equal ones, you know, like, you know, it's almost like, you know, tell, you know, uh, the uh, database to just select all from the users where user ID equal one or one equal one. So when it comes to SQL, I wouldn't want to come. I don't want to confuse you. When it comes to SQL, they have a, a bunch of things like that. For example, they always have enough you know, select. For example, if I want to select something from the database, you should always select uh, select this sign say all, select all, like you know, and then form whatever, whatever. So this all, this one equals one is so powerful. You see that it just return information, you know, the first username and ID from that database. Uh, now, what if I want to see more information, you know, what, what if I want to see more information about, uh, about, you know, all the users in that database, I can actually, you know, try about one or one, you know, the parameter equal one. See, now, you know, I see, you know, so many information about uh, so many users, user one, Gordon, Ak, Pablo, like the username and, and, and all the information. And the other thing that you can see many times in the real life, you, you will never see like, you know, the session, the information about the domain name, you shouldn't see them right here. Like if you go to a website or any bank or uh, school, etc., you see, once you log in, you see a bunch of numbers that they don't make sense but in my case you can actually see all the parameters into the web browser so now what i can actually do i can try to just you know what if i want to just get information about hack me oh i know that this is number three because we have one two three four five i can actually pass that parameter what about you know uh i can see three or one equal one There we go. See, so just get the ID three because you know from the uh, previous scripts that we put, oh, you see that you know uh, Ak, you first name Ak and surname me was the uh, number three. So now you know you can do so many things when it comes to SQL injection. You know this is you know the basics because uh, I wouldn't want to confuse you guys. If you come like to the OAP stop ten, you can actually uh, come down here. And they're gonna give you examples you know on all the things that you can try now when it comes to security it's very important for you to understand how to protect so now you know what we can actually do if we go like to uh to the OAP sub 10 let's see you know sql injection prevention and then from there uh, we can just go to the OAP sub 10 uh, to tell you, they're gonna tell you how to protect it. But you know, if you're a programmer, it's very important, you know, to just you know use parameters. Because the reason why you see that, you know, when I enter like some random numbers and ask questions, the database just reveal itself to me. So the best way to just you know prevent against SQL injection is, is make sure that you know you use you know parameters, SQL parameters, you know, to just prevent everything. And that's why I come here. With the OAP sub 10 uh, uh, cheat sheet to just so we, so we can just go together. If you go down here, they're gonna give you an example. If you're a programmer, you can just know you know how to just use pass parameters. So when it when an attacker just come to your uh, website or to your database trying to just uh, sign in or authenticate themselves, 
even though they put something that is uh, that is unsecure, it's not going to reveal itself. So now, you know, as you see, you know, how to just, you know, the definition of a SQL injection, how to just prevent it. So now what we can do, if we go back to uh, DVWA, we can actually go, come to security and pretend that, you know, you know what to do to fix it. We can actually set, set this back to I and submit it. Pretend that, you know, you're a developer and ju you just fix that and you put a parameter. So now if we go back to the SQL injection, and we can actually try to pass it, like, you know, one equal one. And I hit enter, nothing happened. So uh, it's very important, you know, for you guys, you know, to just uh, to understand, you know, why something works and why it doesn't work. But, you know, DVWA, I highly recommend it. You can learn so much here, you know, in addition to SQL injection, you can do like the brute force attack, which you can just discuss it in a different video and then uh, cross site scripting, etc. Now, if you found this video useful, make sure that you like, subscribe and share. And if you go to our playlist, make sure that you visit that playlist because we have a lot of good things there, like, you know, whether it is networking, uh, cybersecurity, and we are going to cover cloud security, uh, etc. Thank you so much.